I want to show you how you can use Google Sheets to compute the payback and the discounted payback period. Now these are capital budgeting techniques that allow us to determine if a project is good or not. Now there's some shortcomings of the payback and discounted payback period methods, but that doesn't make them useless. So some of the drawbacks are the payback period doesn't account for the time value of money, it doesn't account for risk, it ignores the cash flows after the cutoff period we choose, the payback period for deciding the project is good or not. That payback period choice or that cutoff point is arbitrary. So there are a lot of things that aren't particularly good about this, but that doesn't make it useless. Okay, the, One of the strongest things uh, for this method is that it's a simple approach. And so it makes for a good secondary method. So simple can be really useful. Okay, It tells us here how fast we get our money back. Now, if you happen to be a chief financial officer of a company and you're pitching a project that you want to do to the board of directors, now the board is going to be made up of business savvy people. However, everyone there is not necessarily an expert in finance. So if you start talking about NPV, IRR, some of these other methods, that may be somewhat confusing to them. So the payback period is very simple. Hey, it takes us four years to get our money back. Okay, it's also very useful on a personal level. Suppose you're deciding, you know, you want to convince your spouse to, that we should refinance the house. Well, your spouse may not be an expert in finance. However, if you go to your spouse and you say, look, I think we ought to refinance. Interest rates went down, and it's the case that it's going to cost us three thousand dollars to in cost to do this refinance, but we're going to save two hundred dollars a month. So we're going to get our money back in fifteen months. Okay, that's really easy to understand and makes for a strong um, argument as to why we should do it. So simple can be really valuable um, in the business world. Okay. So let's see how we do this. We're interested in how long it takes us to get our money back from the project. So we have a project that costs 317000 and it has cash flows of 95000 a year for five years. How long does it take us to get our money back? You can see it's going to take more than three years, because three years is going to add up to less than 300000 and we have over 300,000 here. So it's going to be three years and some fraction of the fourth year. So three and some fraction. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to have this amount here, right? This is our remainder. In year one, we have, or year zero, we haven't paid anything off. In year one, we've taken this and we add this to it, right? So we paid off. 222, or I'm sorry, we paid off 95,000, so now our balance is 222,000. Okay, and then we'll pay off another 95,000 here and another 95,000 here. The way I put the formula in, we can just copy this down. And you can see that it takes three full years and then some fraction of that last year because it's not going to take the whole fourth year because you only have 32,000 to cover. So that looks like that's about a third of a year, right? So it should be about three and a third years. Exactly how much is it? It's three plus, so it's the full years, three plus, and then I'm going to put in a negative number because I want this to come out positive, divided by the amount of the cash flow in year four. So we're figuring out the fraction of year four it takes to cover that 32,000. And it turns out to be 0.34. So we we're guessing that it was about three and a third years. And in fact, that is correct. Now, if you don't like the fact that this doesn't account for the time value of money, you can do the discounted payback period. What do you do here? basically the same thing except you find the present value of the cash flows and then do this using the present value of the cash flows as our, as our cash flow. Okay, So we can use um, the function in, in uh, Google Sheets 
the rate. I chose a rate of 10%. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock the cell. It locks the column as well as the row. I only need to lock the row, but makes it easier than me just going back and typing a dollar sign in there. The number of periods, we want that to change, so we're not going to lock that. Here it's year zero. Uh, the payment amount, there is no payment. The payment amount would be the an annuity, the PMT, if you happen to be using um, Google Sheets or Excel, they call it payment amount here. Um, and the future value is right here. So let me close up the parentheses so we get, oh, and let me, let me put a negative sign in front of this because I want this to still be negative. So when you use the PV function, it gives you the opposite sign of what this is. All right, I'm going to copy these down, and I could have put the future value in as a negative value. Here, I just put it in front of the function. All right, so we get these cash flows here, present value. This would be the present value of the 95,000 in one year, present value of the 95,000 in two years. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. All right, equals this, and then here, this actually copied it's not copying down what I want. So let's see, I want this plus this. Okay, so you've paid off 86,364. Let's just copy this down all the way. And you can see here it takes a full four years and then some fraction of the fifth year. Okay, which makes sense, right? If you're taking the present value of the cash flows are going to be smaller. It's going to take a little longer to pay off your, um, your project. So here it's going to be 4 plus, and again, I'm going to say a negative of this divided by the cash flow or the present value of the cash flow in year 5. And so here we get 4.26981. Let me see if I can adjust that number of decimal places make it look a little nicer so 4.27 years to do this now it's also the case that because I happen to have all the same cash flows here we simply could have taken the 317,000 for the for this one here okay these are not all the same cash flows and divided it by 95,000 so if I did this you know I, I want it to be a positive number so I'm going to say this divided by this, I should get the same thing, all right? And if I just adjust the number of decimal places here, I get the 3.4 as well. So while this isn't a perfect method, it can be rather useful as a secondary method to support the claims for the um, for undertaking this project.